what you're about to hear has never been released to the public. This voicemail was left on the Project Veritas tip line on September 3, 2020, which led our journalists to investigate the matter of Ashley Biden's diary, thrusting us into a pivotal moment of history for all of press freedom. Hi there, I'm calling from Florida. My family, their friend who owns a house down here in Palm Beach, was renting it out. I don't know how, but this is a while back. But anyway, somebody, a new renter moved in and Ashley Biden was staying in this room and they found her diary, all her clothes, luggage, pills. Anyway, um, diary is pretty crazy. Um, I think it's worth taking a look at. It's not a joke real and um, I'd love to get into your hands. After years of public speculation and internal deliberation, we are finally releasing our conversation with Ashley Biden about her diary and other possessions. They were abandoned and later offered to Project Veritas. Hi, is this Ashley Biden? This is she. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, I just wanted, so I heard you have um, a few of my belongings. Um, and so I was going to ask if, it would, if you could please meet my friend, Eric, who is down in Del Rey, if you could meet him and get, and get this up to him. There's, there's a, a diary here. It starts in January. It says, January, at the end of a New York month, I'm sitting on a bed uh, at the I building. Yeah, so if you could just give everything that you have um, to Eric, that would be really um, um, great. I don't want to give this to to the wrong person. I mean, I want to make uh, sure. It, at, this, is the, at this point, and I don't mean to. I, I don't want to have to get Secret Service involved in this, right? Because it's just it's a whole process. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I am Ashley Biden. It is my stuff. So if you could just give all of that over, I would really appreciate it. I know you sent a picture to my husband with a camera. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. a few other things that are mine as well. So that would be really great. Where is a good place uh, for him to meet you? There's also this bag with luggage tags on it. Uh, for, and so is that bag, because there's, there's all this stuff, is that bag yours too, Ashley? Yeah, it is. Shortly after the phone call, this October 16th letter was sent from Project Veritas to Joe Biden's presidential campaign asking the candidate for comment. October 23rd. A follow-up email from our then chief legal officer. And on October 29, 2020, Ashley Biden's attorney, Roberta Kaplan, finally responded saying, quote, This is insane. We should send to the SDNY. This is the FBI splash page showing the SDNY immediately opened an investigation into Project Veritas on the very same day. And on November 8, 2020, Project Veritas returns all Ashley Biden's abandoned items, including her diary, to Florida local law enforcement. You're watching Pre-Dawn Raids by the FBI on three Project Veritas journalists. They took place on November 4th and November 6th of 2021. I'm sorry, so what is this regarding? This is a search warrant. Incidentally, New York Times national security reporter Mike Schmidt contacts Project Veritas journalist immediately following the raids. A new wrinkle today in the investigation into the apparent theft of the president's daughter, Ashley Biden's diary. The New York Times reporting the FBI Saturday searched the home of James O'Keefe. 47 electronic devices, including our reporters' cell phones, laptops, and thumb drives were seized. To be clear, no one was arrested and no one was charged with any crime. Project Veritas obtained documents showing the SDNY was spying on our journalists well before the FBI raids on our homes in November 2021. Using secret subpoenas, 
the SDNY was reading our emails and deliberately hid that fact from a judge who barred the government from viewing Veritas's documents. After turning over our communications to the FBI, which included content from personal email accounts of Project Veritas employees, Microsoft, Google, and Apple finally notified us in spring of 2022 when their gag orders were lifted. Nearly two years after these raids, the legal battle for Project Veritas to defend First Amendment rights rages on. To date, we have spent millions of dollars defending these former Project Veritas journalists. We continue to provide representation to all of them. This fight is to protect all journalists from government overreach. If the Department of Justice continues to go unchecked, then our reality of unconstitutional raids, intimidation, and secret subpoenas will cripple any journalist daring to engage in actual journalism. Among the evidence we found of the DOJ trampling on our rights as journalists includes politically motivated spying into journalist news gathering activities, disparate treatment of the press by the Trump DOJ and the Biden DOJ, evidence that the DOJ plays favorites with press entities, including the New York Times, under the Biden DOJ, Project Veritas received no warnings about the secret subpoenas and search warrants of journalists' devices, both personal and professional. Meanwhile, in a similar case, the DOJ allowed Google to alert the New York Times they were coming for email accounts of four Times reporters. This allowed the attorneys for the Times to fight the demands for journalists' emails. Eventually, the DOJ dropped their demands. Just last month, we learned that the Biden Justice Department targeted Project Veritas, a news organization specializing in undercover journalism. Project Veritas was subjected to an extensive investigation by the FBI, including having its email seized on Microsoft servers. We should all support this legislation and the important protections it provides for journalists. There's a reason why the founders chose to enshrine freedom of the press and the First Amendment to the Constitution. This bill, referenced by Congressman Jim Jordan, H.R. 4330, is known as the Press Act. It protects reporters' First Amendment rights. Liberty depends on freedom of the press, whether it's Tucker Carlson, James O'Keefe, Glenn Greenwald, Cheryl Atkinson, or Bob Woodward. Good reporters are those who are committed to holding the government accountable. It passed the House on September 19th, 2022, and is currently before the Senate. That brings us to today. What began as a voicemail left on the Project Veritas tip line has led to this pivotal moment in American history. We're not only up against the power of the federal government, but also the corporate media infrastructure that exists to support it. Project Veritas will never shy away from exposing the truth to the American public. Our job is never done. Stay tuned.